Hello, Andrew. Hi. You push the limits of photography. You push them and you, you really push color in your work. Is that something you've always done or is that a new thing? I guess I've always done it more lately though, but it's always been, um, I'm yellow, blue, colorblind. That doesn't mean I'm completely colorblind. It means I don't see certain shades. So if there's like, for instance, yellow marker on paper, I don't see, you know, stoplights look the same to me, but I know the bottom one is brighter. It means go, but I see most colors, but it's, I don't see as many shades maybe as you do, but I'm not sure what you see because I see it differently, but I've always pushed colors um, to what I see and what I like and just explore also based on Isaac Newton's theory of color that maybe we don't see them all yet. Maybe there's more. So how did you, <laughs> how did you start in the photography world or taking pictures? Um, seeing photos of my dad in Europe with a Nikon on his chest from my parents' honeymoon and being like, wow, where's that camera? Like, I want to shoot photos. And I don't remember, maybe I was 9, 10, 11 years old. I didn't really start shooting, shooting until I was about 12. But I wanted his camera. I was finally kind of old enough to start using it. He taught me how to use it a bit, and I started shooting. And it was just mostly nature. That's what I was really into at the time. Which so it's really been the same theme forever, yeah. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. So your work, you know, your work sort of begins uh, in the water and, and I see it just going from there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it began really in the woods near my parents' house, photographing trees and flowers and those kind of things. And then I got really interested in surfing because it was another way to access nature, right? It was this amazing thing. So my work really shifted more to water. Um, in my early 20s, let's say. Um, and it was just a whole new world, a whole new world for me. And I mean, I've shot a lot of surfing over the years, but that's more just of fun. You know, it was never really, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just fun. Surfing photos were just fun, but it, it was in the realm of nature. So what's the thing, like the, the most unexpected thing about being a photographer. Someone asked me this in an interview recently when I was like, huh? She just, she wanted to know what's, what's the thing that I have to do a lot that I didn't expect to have to do. And I was like, oh, math, because I have to do, you know, budget. Most for unexpected this. thing. I don't know if it's anything unexpected, but um, paying attention to the weather, paying attention to the weather is, is always foremost in my mind, knowing what's going to happen with the weather forecast or where I may be going, what the weather is going to be. So, you know, having maybe a mental shot list of things I want to do and see, depending, oh, if it's going to rain tomorrow, it's possible or not possible to shoot that, those kind of things. Um, hmm. I don't well, have anything unexpected. I mean, I've been doing it for so long. I, everything is kind of just, I'm in my flow. To think back when I was a kid, what was the most unexpected thing? Um, just making mistakes and learning as I, I went and teaching myself photography as far as exposures and speeds and all of that. I had no idea what I was doing. So you get a roll of film back and be like, what did I do? You know? And then you start writing down your settings and figuring it out as you go because there were no really computers back then. There was no internet to teach you how to do it. But now you totally, I mean, you really do embrace the mistakes and you push those mistakes. And I yeah, going. I still make mistakes all the time. And sometimes like I, you know, I've told you before, I'll get back a roll of film. I'll see one or two that I really like it or keepers. And then there's, you know, the other eight, I'm like, Oh, there's a mistake on that. It's underexposed, overexposed, but maybe later on, I'll go back to that and start experimenting mm -hmm. with that file and trying to pull things out of it, whether it be with color or exposure. And it's fun. I like to experiment. There is no mistakes. There, well, no, right? Like, no, it's right. It's just a matter of light and exposure and what says it's right or wrong. Yeah. And that's something, right, that I immediately am drawn to in your work that you just embrace these. Um, I don't know. You, you, it, it's clear to me that you embrace the unexpected, like the thing that you might not have been going for that you're like, wait, that's beautiful. That's that happens a lot because nature has its moments and we don't know when it's going to happen. 
So I always have cameras with me. I'll drive around, have two cameras in the front seat of my car always because you never know when that moment's going to happen. And it happens a lot that it's unexpected. It's hard to dictate what nature is going to do. And let's talk about this next project you want to do because you are going to have to embrace all sorts of chaos. What, what, what is the plan? What, what do you want to do? The plan is to go to the Rockies. I haven't spent that much time there, but I grew up on the photos of like Wilkinson and Ansel Adams and all of those classic photographers of the West seeing the landscapes and being like, oh my God, they're incredible. So I want to go to Yellowstone. I want to go to Yosemite. I want to go to all the parks and I want to shoot these locations again from some of the same locations they did, maybe some different and see what's happening a hundred years and change later to those environments, you know, because there's so much talk about the environment and there's no doubt that the environment's suffering from us or from just ne- the nature of the world. But I want to go see what's going on with no political agenda and, and see for myself if there are any changes and what those causes may be. I mean, it, almost in the same way that those guys initially did, right? They headed west just to see, just to look. Yeah, just to explore and see what was what. And they were, I mean, mesmerized by the beauty of those places. And I want to feel the same. I want to go. But I also want to see what has changed, if anything. You said earlier, and so I'm going to push you on this one, but you said that um, one of the photographers, I think it's uh, it's either Wilkins, or it's one of them, inspired you know, Jefferson saw those pictures. It was, it was, it was um, Carlton yeah. um, Wilkins who inspired Lincoln to make that a park system and preserve it with his photographs. So he's like, wow, this place is so amazing. We need to protect this. And they were smart enough back then to do so. And here we are today. So it was, you know, Ansel Adams is the big name that everybody knows, but there were many photographers that came before him. He started shooting, I think, in the 20s. And Wilkins started shooting in maybe like, 1880, maybe, maybe a little earlier. Yeah. And he was done by 1920. And many people might not know his name. I don't know. I mean, even I think, um, what's his name? Thomas Hine shot Old Faithful, I think even earlier. So I think he's one of the first photographers in Yellowstone. So I'm very interested to see these locations, compare them to the old work, see what's changed, you know, has you know, on some of Ansel's work, has the riverbed changed? Has the mountains changed? Is there a new tree growth? Was there a fire? Was, you know, what caused what? And um, I'm very interested in it as well as seeing the beauty of those places. And there's such power in that, right? Like if you think, some people are like, do you, re- you really think art can change the world? And I'm like, yeah, art can change the world. Are you kidding me? And you've just given us this anecdote of the National Park System exists because the president of the United States at the time saw some pictures that inspired him to say, mm, hang on, I think, I think we need to preserve this. Right. I mean, the, what, what's changing the world? Changing the world is changing one mind at a time. So I can say it's changed me because that's what I'm dedicating my life to. Because of their art, I'm inspired to make more art. And art lives on. And hopefully I'll inspire someone else. So, you know, there you are. Right. I mean, it's pure as pure as that. Yeah. Um, what do you What do you love most about what you do? What do I love most? What I do? I mean, the freedom is great. The freedom is great. I don't know what I love the most about what I do. I mean, it's almost automatic. Like I said at this point, I've been doing it so long. It's just I don't know anything different. I mean, I've had other careers. But I've always been shooting photography until it became something where it was a full-time career. Um, What do I love the most? I think I love the most is capturing those moments for myself. You know, when, when you get that moment and sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes you click that shutter and you're like, I got it. It's every once in a while, you know, maybe once every thousand images or even more. But there's been those moments, I think maybe those memorable moments of those couple of times where everything lined up and I actually got that right exposure. And I knew it when I clicked it. That's an amazing feeling, you know, to capture that moment in time, right? Because we're capturing moments in time that, you know, we'd be gone and wouldn't exist unless we captured them. 
a um, a photographer and and friend of mine said to me the other day that um that as as people we can understand the past and we can understand the future if we know how to anticipate and we know how to think about what's just happened but we don't understand the present and a photograph gives us that insight hmm. because it shows us a moment that was as like it came past us and i i was like what no come on barts and i did this whole like art historian history thing and then i realized i was like oh, wait no it's true it's true like we don't we don't have a present as soon as i'm speaking it's gone right unless you capture it with video or photographs or something else or audio but that's how we preserve time that's how we preserve time since the invention of these things right yeah that's how that's that's what we will leave for our children in the future it's not just books anymore and, and you know carvings on a rock wall somewhere in the desert or in a cave it's you know photographs and, and media that we're going to leave behind that's what we're sending to space now we're not sending books out to outer space so maybe an alien life will find it we're, they're, we're sending messages yeah Data. through light and waves so you know there's an argument that um, we live in a simulation, right? This is all fake, or or it's just all you know a, a manipulation of waves. But it really is a manipulation of waves. We're just manipulating it in one way, in this dimension. Maybe there's another dimension, but it's all light. It's all waves. All Earth, all the systems, all the universe, all our life is made out of waves: sound waves, radio waves, light waves, electronic waves. Our bodies work on electronic impulses and waves. And photography captures a certain amount of waves. What's your dream? What's what's the, the dream, dream, dream scenario for these images? The images you haven't yet, yet captured, the ones that you're like thinking about making. Where do you want them to I don't be? Know. Who who do you want to see them? What's the dream? I don't know. I haven't given it a lot of thought as far as that. Um what's the dream with these images? I don't know. I really don't. I don't know. That's okay. <laughs> um, I need to think to that. Let's come back to that. Let me let me think about that. It's tied to like, why do you take pictures in the first place? Are they for you? Or are they for? You know, I mean, mostly they are for me. You know, me capturing mm -hmm. those moments that I like. And that's how it really all started. And that's how it's been. And then, you know, people started wanting these things from me and wanting prints of them. It's like, great. And, but I don't, I don't really shoot with an agenda usually, except for my own agenda. You know, I don't shoot with like, oh, the hot topic of this year is um, palm trees. So I didn't shoot palm trees because they're selling really well in the galleries. It doesn't really float my boat. So I really do it for myself. Something like this, um, is still for myself and my interests, but it would also, I would also like it to reach other people and hopefully have a good environmental message to help protect these places and be more aware and conscious of what we're doing, if anything, to the earth in a negative way. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I was going to ask, I was going to ask like, what it what it's been like for you in the art world but i don't i don't think i, don't I mean know. i don't really pay you know as far as the art world i don't really pay attention to the art world i i really don't know much about these artists and i've been learning as i've been like exposed to them like in, through charlie in the studio and like oh who's this artist this is amazing work and then I, I go back and research who they are i didn't grow up that way i didn't go to art school I didn't really intend to being an artist for, for sale. Uh, I was doing it for myself and because I love nature and I thought it was groovy to capture these things for myself. So I never really had that agenda, you know, and from what I hear from everyone, the art world's really silly as far as there are so many people that are artists that are just made by a, a group of people because they choose to make that person. You know, they may be talented, they may be not, they may have this long list of gallery shows or this education in the art world, whatever the mix may be, but they get chosen 
by a group of wealthy people that collect art and say, this is the next person. We all own him. And then it pops off. I really want nothing to do with that because that doesn't really have legitimacy to me. It seems like this, you know, the stilts could fall out at any time. So yeah. I've been going, I, I've been going very slow as far as the art world of my work. I haven't done any shows on my own. I haven't done any books. I haven't pressed it. Um, I don't really put myself out there like that. It's organic and it happens as it happens. I'm happy to take the opportunities when they happen, but I'm, I'm not pushing it too much. And maybe that's why your work does seem so pure. They feel, it feels authentic. It feels like it comes not from a market place. Like it sits outside and it has, yeah, it's just got, it's got a different thing. And it has that like wanderlust to it. It's to be honest, a lot of times I feel like that, teenage boy who's in the woods with his camera you know looking around for frogs and snakes and nature you know what's going on that's that's the feeling that's the stuff i like roaming around in nature with nobody around and no agendas and no bullshit you know nature is a beautiful thing but you, you you know you have to get into it you know I, I met through a friend who was part American Indian once, um, a tribal elder. And we talked about sitting in the woods and I told him my experience with a coyote in the woods and it really scared me, you know? And he said, that's good. He said, sit in the woods until you're scared and then sit there some more. And then things will start to open up for you. Then you'll start to understand. And it made sense. It, it made sense. And as I've done that and pushed myself, for instance, I was in British Columbia one year and I hiked in um, not even that far, maybe a quarter mile or so. And it's big country up there. And all I had was a big clunky camera. I really should have brought some kind of protection. Now they say you should bring bear spray, but I had no idea. And I came across a tree that had been ripped apart by a bear. And I don't think he was around, but it was enough to freak me out and give me that feeling of real fear. And I sat down and just checked everything out for a while. And I thought about that quote. I was like, all right, let's sit here through the fear. And you know what? Your senses open up. Things that you don't use in your normal life when you're walking down the street or getting in your car or in the house, your senses really open up. Everything becomes hyper-focused. You know, smell, sight, everything. You just, it's amazing. So, ah, nature is incredible. Yeah. So I, I love it. <laughs> And maybe that's, you know, maybe that's what I read, I read in your images is that, right? That I, there's some, that's somehow palpable, uh, that maybe that dawning respect. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be big time out there in those big mountains, you know, with big grizzly bears and mountain lions and wolves that are in those areas. And just the thought of having that, you have to go into those places with utmost respect for nature, you know? And it's amazing to me how these guys like Ansel went into these environments and I don't know if they were carrying firearms or whatever. There's definitely no bear spray back then, but they had a hundred pounds of camera equipment and they went into these mountains that were unknown and loaded with wildlife back then because we had not been hunted or killed. I mean, they were courageous. So that's another point in this too. I want to have be I want to have the courage to go into these mountains solo and um explore. And we I don't I don't do enough of it. I don't think any of us do enough of it. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just come just for like a couple days? Sure. That's what all my friends say. They're like, we're coming, we're meeting you. We're gonna like, come meet me, it's fine. <laughs> you know, but I also I do like to work and shoot on my own. You know, I've had various girlfriends over the years that want to come and I'm like, you know, things I'm like, how do I tell her I, no without being a jerk? Like, it's just my own world. And I want to get lost in that little kid mind again and shoot what I want to shoot and see what I want to see without anyone else's agenda or vibe, you know, because people bring their vibes and their energy, even if they're not saying anything. So that's what I hope to get out of this trip is to vibe out in nature. <laughs> Promise me that when it's done, we sit back down and you tell me like every single last detail. Yeah. And we'll review images and we can tell stories. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm.